I'm Hawktacus, and welcome to my three-part series on the Chariot. This first video will be an introduction to the series as a whole, as well as a brief history on chariots. Video two will be the practical applications and uses, usages of chariots. And the third video is going to be me speculating about fun uses for chariots in a primarily fantasy context. So let's start with something simple. What is a chariot? Um, a chariot is a two-wheeled conveyance pulled by a beast of burden of some kind, typically a horse, but occasionally a donkey or mule, and very rarely an oxen, uh, primarily used for war or hunting. Um, they were invented, believed to be invented, I must say, we don't have a 100% certain on this, but the oldest known one we have is from, uh, I'm not even going to try to say that, um, in uh, modern Russia and Kazakhstan from around 2000 BCE. It's the oldest true chariot we can say we have found. Though there are pictures of a chariot-like uh, device um, in Mesopotamia uh, about 500 years earlier. So it's shaky. Somewhere in the Mesopotamian region, possibly into Eastern Europe, as we have found some fairly old wheels or something that they at least resemble wheels, in Eastern Europe slightly earlier. So we're a bit of an argument over who's got the oldest chariot. But needless to say, chariots are at least 2,000 years old, but they didn't really get going until about the 18th or 17th century. And uh, we'll start with that in the ancient Near East, also called the Middle East, which would be the Hittites, the Egyptians, and the Persians. We will start talking about the Hittites. Uh, they have the oldest testimony of chariot warfare in the ancient Near East is an old Hittite text, uh, which mentions 40 teams of horses. Though we're not entirely certain if they're actually referring to actual chariots or some other sort of horse team. Um, so we're not 100% sure, and that's the 18th century BC. We are quite positive uh, chariots were in the Hittite Empire dates to the late 17th century. Uh, they had a horse training text from the 15th century BCE onwards. And Hittites were big charioteers. They were a big deal. They were on the cutting edge of chariot technology at the time, as they had a chariot that could uh, hold three men in it, unlike the Egyptians who could only carry two, as they had, as the Egyptians had their axle at the rear of the chariot, whereas the Hittites had theirs in the center, which allowed all of the weight of the men standing in it to be on the, pre uh, all the pressure to be on the axle in the wagon instead of partially on the horse's backs. It was a little odd. Actually, the largest chariot battle in history took place at the Battle of Kadesh in 1274 BC, which is between the Hittites and the Egyptians. Now to jump a bit uh, back west to quickly cover something. Europe as a whole didn't seem to like chariots as much. Uh, the Greeks used them to a fairly limited extent. Uh, they didn't really use them for war all that much. Uh, they used them, I guess, closer to a sports car. You know, drive around on roads, go really fast, stuff like that. Which makes sense, because Greece is like all hills. It's hills, it's mountains, it's rocks, it, it's terrible horse country in general, which is kind of why they all looked at uh, Alexander the Great as really weird, because he was using lots and lots of horses, which wasn't really a Greek thing. Uh, Rome was much the same way. Rome didn't really care for chariots. Rome didn't care all that much for horses either. They just let the auxiliaries deal with that, because they realized their thing was infantry. Um, they did use chariots for moving people around, like... Again, it's like a car. You know, a nice, fancy thing to drive around in so you look cool. Uh, they had chariot racing. That was a that was pretty popular for them. Uh, the people who used it the most were the Celts. By the time the Romans had gotten to the Gauls, specifically, uh, they had stopped using chariots almost completely, except possibly as a means of uh, conveyance or a sign of stature. Uh, they did state that, the Gauls did, that... They had used them to for some time, but then had transferred over to conventional cavalry like everyone else did. The big exception to this, as Caesar found out, was Britain, who still used a lot of chariots, uh, as the ones you see on screen right now are, Brit are British 
chariots. Now, probably the biggest thing you're noticing about this chariot is there's no front guard on this thing. It looks radically different to all the other chariots. That's because they do crazy stuff like you see right now. Uh, they'll jump off them quickly. They'll jump off the front. They'll jump off the back. They'll jump off the sides. They, the Celts didn't quite use them the same way as everyone else did. They didn't ride around and shoot you from them. They throw javelins out and whatnot. But mostly from point A to point B type of thing on the battlefield. But now I'm getting into video 2 stuff and I'm going to not do that anymore. Uh, now we're going to jump back east again and go over to the more Persian style of stuff um, and India in particular in South Central Asia chariots weren't huge oh, they have a name for them over there they're called a Ratha which is a spoke wheel chariot or cart of antiquity and they do seem to use it interchangeably with a four wheeled cart and a two wheeled cart um, they did seem to find spoked wheels in the Indus River Valley civilization uh, between 2600 and 1900 BC. They, a bunch of little terracotta carts and whatnot, but they didn't seem to see any real, I guess, chariots proper, as we recognize them. Uh, and they didn't seem to become a real big thing in the region until uh, the Achaemenid period, I think I'm saying that correctly, which is about... 500 350 bce it's kind of late though if you go to kazakhstan which is a little farther west this is where you get one of the oldest probably the oldest chariot we have which is from around 2000 bce so you just go a little bit farther west and chariots become huge but you go a little too far east and suddenly you're in india and iran uh, and what pakistan and they just sort of stop being a thing it's kind of weird actually um, though in India, they do, their gods do seem to ride around in chariots, like proper chariots with two wheels, and they are in pictographs, or petroglyphs, if you prefer, and yeah, that's about kind of about it. They didn't seem to actually use them all that much, which I guess makes sense if you think about India's topography. It doesn't really lend itself well to a wheeled vehicle for war, I guess. That's pure speculation on my part. They just didn't seem to be super popular but if we do go a bit back west and go back to the Achaemenid period which is referring specifically to the Achaemenid Empire which is a Persian Empire uh chariots became a very big deal uh this is where you got the scythed chariots which were used similarly to shock cavalry as far as we can tell and uh this is extremely important and I'm talking about this specific group um for a very important reason because at the end of that time you got Darius the Third. Now you might know that name. It's because he fought Alexander the Great and lost. This was pretty much the death knell of chariots in the uh, Western in the Western world. Uh, it was at the Battle of Gargamela uh, that this happened. To extremely simplify this, um, Alexander won using his conventional cavalry against an army that composed of primarily chariots. And as far as anyone was concerned, this is all the proof we needed that conventional cavalry beats chariots. Um, that's pretty much how that happened. Now we jump east one last time, go to China and uh, their chariots. Uh, China's got an interesting history with those. They, uh, the traditional sources uh, attribute the invention of the chariot to the Zhao Dynasty minister Zhai Zhong. I think I'm saying that correctly. I don't speak Chinese, so if I'm butchering these, please forgive me. Uh, and they say they were used at the Battle of Gan in the 21st century BCE. However, there's no archaeological evidence to indicate this, and any evidence of chariots doesn't show up till about 1200 BCE, and that's small-scale uses uh, usage during the Shang, uh, late Shang Dynasty. Uh, this would be about the same time that um, Europe started getting them, or the Middle East from the Eurasian steppe, so Kazakhstan area. So, that's the best guess, is 1,200 or so. Uh, later on, it did reach its its own golden age, but significantly later than uh, the Battle of Kadesh, uh, except in their case, it was during the Warring States period, which is, the, which is 471 to 221 BCE. So we're talking 800 years later than the Middle East. Um, it finally died off, uh, 
due to the increasing use of the crossbow, massed infantry, the adoption of standard cavalry units, and the adoption of nomadic cavalry. So every reason that it died out with uh, Europe, it died out in China. Uh, they did continue to serve as mobile command posts for officers during the Qin and Han dynasties, and they did use some armored chariots uh, uh, in the Han dynasty's war against the Zhongyu Confederation, which is really awesome, and I'm not going to go any more into that because that's for the next video. What I will talk a little bit more, uh, more about is that the Chinese chariots do appear to be a little closer to Hittite design with the axle in the center of the box. Also, I do see some of them seem to have benches for the driver to sit on and a nice little uh, umbrella. So those kind of look like uh, buckboards from the American West, which is kind of neat, actually. But yeah, uh, Chine China and chariots all over the place. So uh, that'll do it for today. Peace out.